everyone, my name is Jess and welcome to my channel, Jess and Romance Landia, where I talk about romance books and happily ever afters and how they're one day going to topple the patriarchy. It has been a hot minute and a half since I've sat down to speak to you guys about romance novels. I know, I'm really sorry about it and I am going to explain why. So basically for the past month I have just been completely bogged down by deadlines. I'm a final year university student so I've been trying to get my dissertation in. I submitted it on Friday, I believe it's now Tuesday, and I'm so relieved to have it in guys. I really enjoyed writing it. It's actually on romance novels and if you guys would like me to make a video about the 12,000 words I wrote for some reason I'd be very happy to do so. Um, but even though I enjoyed writing it, it was also a long process, involved a lot of rewriting, a lot of editing, a lot of crying into a thesaurus at 2am but it's done now so that is great. I had also filmed a video when I was staying in my hometown where I was self-isolating since Christmas um, but that didn't go to plan because when I uploaded the footage and went to edit it I realised that my bra was actually just for some reason poking out of my t-shirt like literally my whole my boob was practically like hanging out with the neckline I don't know how it happened but it was there for the whole video and whilst I'm all about like you know free the nipple free love <laughs> it just I don't want my mum to find that on the internet and I kind of didn't just want to get my bra out in front of like 500 subscribers thank you for 500 this is a mess of an introduction anyway yeah boob was out didn't fancy a boob gate happening it was also laundry day so it was an ugly bra and if i'm gonna accidentally flash the internet i want to look damn good doing it so i scrapped that footage and i'm coming back to you guys today with a video that i'm really really excited to bring you this is actually a video that has been requested a few times which is just wild to me i'm so flattered that there are people out there that actually want to hear my opinion on these lovely little books that i read and that is my favorite ff romance novels ff for those of you who don't know stands for female female and it's basically a romance novel where the two main love interests identify as women and I wanted to give a bit of a disclaimer not even a disclaimer just have a chat about it because the thing is I don't buy the argument that I hear a lot of people make which is that there's just no FF fiction out there because there is believe me there is not just this handful of books that I talk about today there are hundreds of FF romances scattered across um, you know, years and various authors and various subgenres. It's just that they are not talked about as much. And I think part of that is very possibly down to sexism, down to the fact that the majority of people that read romance are heterosexual women. Um, so I guess they're maybe looking for a male figure, masculine figure, as like one of the two main love interests. But I think it could also be to do with the networks behind the books. So I do some really fun volunteering as a reviewer for Gay Romance Reviews or GRR and um, that is one of the many huge networks that I found that supports and sustains MM Fiction. There are groups of thousands, tens of thousands of members talking about MM Fiction and whilst there are groups out there about FF Fiction, none of this scope, they're all, you know, a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand members, so I think that we lack the kind of catalogue that MM has when it comes to romance. It's not that the FF fiction isn't out there, it's just that it doesn't have as much of an active community really signposting the kind of best or most prominent works in the genre. So there is FF fiction out there and I do really urge you guys to go and check some out and go and do a little bit of your own research if it's something that you could be interested in. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because I think it's super interesting because for years when I was a teenager, I just thought that it was that there wasn't as much out there but now I just think that it's that I didn't know how to find it. So I do hope that both self-published authors and mainstream authors kind of embrace the FF more and maybe we see it coming more into the mainstream but that's just kind of where I see the industry right now and I thought it would be really interesting to give that disclaimer thing first. I'm also going to do three honourable mentions and the reason that honourable mentions is because their core genre isn't romance so there is I think a sci-fi, a fantasy and a historical romance um, in which the sort of main relationship or the main genre is an FF but there are very prominent FF relationships or FF threads running through it and I did want to mention them because I think they're absolutely bloody wonderful but I also didn't want to make them the main focus of this video given that the focus of this video and of my channel more broadly is the genre of romance fiction. So yeah, I'll start with those three honourable mentions and then go into FF romance that is categorised quite firmly as romance. 
So the first honourable mention that I have is The Suffragette Scandal by Courtney Milan. This is the fourth book in the Brother Sinister series, which I've raved about on this channel before, and the central relationship of this historical romance is MF, so that's not the bit that I'm interested in here. Move, move along, MF romance for today. The romance that I really love in this that I want to flag up is between our main character's best friend, Amanda, who is a staunch suffragette, and Genevieve, who is the social secretary of a character from one of the previous instalments in the series. So it's a really interesting pairing because on the one hand you have Genevieve whose job is basically to like preserve the social standing of Jane, her employer, and on the other hand you have Amanda who is a staunch feminist, is a very involved suffragette, has fallen out of her family because even though she is wealthy and could really attract another wealthy husband has no interest in men and you just kind of plonk them together. The reason I wanted to flag up this relationship is because it really could have been a token relationship but it absolutely wasn't. Amanda gets her own POV in this story and we come back to that POV several times as her own personal story and her romance unfolds and it's just so wonderful and witty and warm and I absolutely love these two so I would definitely recommend picking this up at some point if not for the main story just for these two lovely women that we get to see fall in love along the way the next honourable mention that I have is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is a fantasy novel set in a world where there is a very divided East and West that kind of have to put aside or negotiate their political differences to face the return of an evil dragon named the Nameless One, ironically. This book is beautifully written. It's a, it's a chunk, it's a chunk of a book, but the writing is so lush and evocative and it flows so well that it's really easy to get through. And the FF romance at its heart is stunningly written. I knew Samantha Shannon's previous works from The Bone Season, which is kind of like an urban sort of dystopian fantasy. Um, and that's MF and I wasn't a huge fan of the romance in that, but the romance in this one just blew me away. And yeah, I would highly recommend this. And the final honourable mention that I wanted to make is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This book follows Rosemary Harper who joins the motley crew on board the Wayfarer which is a spaceship that goes around creating wormholes to connect different galaxies. It's a very quiet book despite having such a creative premise and what I mean by that is that a lot of the plot work, a lot of the work done within the within the book is, is character based stuff. It's really the characters and their relationships that drive the story. Um, but despite it seeming quite sort of localised in that sense, it also touches on some really big topics like xenophobia, like racism, um, like sexuality, and the FF romance that emerges from this is really, really beautiful, so I would highly recommend. Okay, so now we're into my main list of recommendations, and the first recommendation I have for you is another Courtney Milan book, and that is Mrs. Martin's Incomparable Adventure. This follows two women in their late 60s, early 70s during the Victorian era, I believe. One of these women is Violetta, who runs a boarding house, and one of the tenants at this boarding house, a very wealthy, narcissistic, arrogant young man about town is just completely failing to pay up. So she approaches his wealthy aunt, Bertrice Martin, and basically says, you got to help me out. Your nephew is just running wild and he's not paying his bills and it's affecting my business. Patrice Martin is a widow and she is very sick of her nephew kind of writing her off as an old woman who can't really contribute anything to their family. She's sick of how he's squandering away her sister's money, of how he treats other women and other people in general. So she says to Violetta, I will make sure that you are um, compensated for everything that he's done. But in the meantime, I want us to get our own back on him. This book is so wonderful and I loved so much about it. First of all, it's hilarious. It's one of the few books that I've actually had to put down because I was laughing too hard to carry on reading it. Patrice Martin's dialogue and her kind of internal monologue is just so hilarious that she had me cracking up on every page. She's an absolute icon. I also really like how despite being quite a funny and at times light-hearted romp, it does still touch on quite serious issues such as um, the way our society treats both women and old people, um, such as the expectations of older women and the kind of family dynamics that come um, with being that older, almost forgotten matriarch. I also really like how the romantic heroines of this novel are two older women. I feel like sort of women in their 60s and 70s aren't an age group that we see represented that much in romance. So getting to read about two women finding love later in life was also just absolutely lovely and I adored this one and would highly recommend it. The next book I have to recommend is The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. 
This follows Catherine St. Day, who is also the Countess of Moth, who decides to hire an astronomer to finish translating um, a late French astronomy text that belonged to her husband. The person that answers her call, however, is Lucy, a young woman and astronomer who comes to stay with Catherine to finish kind of unfolding the mystery behind this ancient text. My favourite thing about this romance is how strong and distinct our individual leads are. They come from very different contexts and bringing them together and letting them sort of share their pain and also share their joy is just a gorgeous journey to witness. It's also beautifully written and so evocative and lovely and I adore the astronomy kind of imagery that runs throughout it. I'm very into like stars and space so that was just a lot of fun to read about as well. Um, and yeah, this one is really popular so I reckon if you guys are into FF you might have already seen it, like about, but I would definitely recommend picking it up if you haven't had the chance to yet. The next book I have to recommend is Through the Roof by Natasha West. This is a contemporary British rom-com and it follows Olivia Ross, who is a very well-established morning presenter. She used to have a reputation for being quite sharp and incisive in her journalism, but the new producers have kind of reined her in a bit and made her bite her tongue in situations where she might not have done five or ten years ago. The producers then hire Holly Reynolds, who is a very beautiful and upcoming news presenter, and it's not long before Olivia realises that they are hoping to replace her with Holly further down the line. I really enjoyed this book. It surprised me because I knew nothing about it going into it. I was just really intrigued by the premise and the premise really pays off throughout. You do get a really interesting exploration of what it is to be a woman in the media and watching these two kind of grapple with that whilst also grappling with their feelings for each other was really really fun and dynamic. I also have a very soft spot for like British rom-coms or rom-coms that sort of remind me of Richard Curtis rom-coms because that's the kind of humour and romance that I grew up with seeing on screen so I just like you know I'm filled with joy whenever I see that recreated on the page. It's also I believe on Kindle Unlimited so if you have that subscription you've really got nothing to lose by picking this lovely little gem up. The next book that I have to recommend is My Lady's Lover by Nicola Davidson. I was drawn to this book which is the first book in a series by the series premise. So the series revolves around the Surrey Sexual Freedom Society or SSFS which is where a group of people um, of various sort of genders and backgrounds and ages gather and kind of talk about their unusual sexual preferences. Our heroine of this book, Beatrice, is a member of the Surrey Sexual Freedom Society who harbours feelings for her employer, Amelia, who is a countess. Amelia, for her part, has a very troubled relationship with her husband, who is basically not a nice man, and she's also really struggling to conceive. So she feels quite lonely. She's um, facing a lot of internalised trauma, um, both from sort of herself and from how the people around her are treating her as a result of her marriage, her station, her struggles to conceive and so she turns to Beatrice and the two of them start developing feelings for one another. This book is really lovely, my heart absolutely broke for Amelia at the beginning having all of this trauma and suffering and really no one to confide in and so I just loved the romance both because it's wonderfully written, it's also very steamy but then because you get to see Amelia really start to process her feelings and improve her sense of self-worth through both herself and the relationship that she develops with Beatrice and it's just a lovely journey to watch a character take. I haven't read any further instalments in this series but judging from the first one I am very excited to see what happens next. The next book I have to recommend is another contemporary and it's Don't Cry For Me by Rachel Lacey. Don't Cry For Me follows Eve Marlowe who is another television presenter, apparently FF loves a good television presenter. Anyway so Eve kind of has this network reputation as being a bit of an ice queen, she hosts this sort of business saving business renovation program um, but the ratings haven't been great recently and she's kind of worried that the platform is going to drop her. So on her way home from work one day she hears some like meowing coming out of nowhere and she discovers a litter of abandoned kittens in a rubbish bin. So she takes in these kittens and quickly realises I have no idea what to do with a bunch of cats, I'm kind of out of my depth here. So Eve contacts Josie who previously ran a sort of animal rehabilitation centre and specialised in cat care I believe, um, but Josie is actually now the owner of a bar that she inherited from her father and she sees an opportunity in working with Eve. She thinks if I help her raise these kittens, Eve and her show and her platform could help me save this bar. What I love about this book is even though on the surface it starts out like 
your kind of standard contemporary romance it's also really a story about loss and grief both women have suffered immense loss at different points and in different ways throughout their lives and their relationship is also how they first start expressing that and admitting that to another person and reaching out for help so it's just a lovely book to read because you have both this gorgeous romantic relationship and this dynamic of two women that are finally allowing themselves to verbalise their suffering to one another and gain support from it. So I would definitely recommend this one. The next book I have to recommend is actually a novella and it is A Lady's Desire by Lily Maxton. This book follows Lady Sarah Lark who despite being the daughter of a member of the peerage basically decides I don't fancy getting married, I really want to travel the world and if any of you have an issue with it you can just deal. She doesn't do that. I don't, I don't know when that was invented. I don't think flipping off was invented in the Regency era. Maybe it was. Shakespeare's era had the thing with thumbs, so who knows what they were doing in the early 1800s. Anyway, so Lady Sarah doesn't want to marry, she doesn't want to stay in a current society, but a wrench is thrown into her plans when her cousin's widow and her former best friend, Winifred, shows up to stay with the Larks. Winifred and Sarah fell out when Winifred married Sarah's cousin because Sarah, unbeknownst to Winifred, had held feelings for her best friend for a really long time. Time. but now Winifred is back and literally staying in the same house as her the two start to rekindle their friendship and eventually something more as well I really like this book because it's like a cute twist on the second chance romance because there wasn't really a first time romance because it was it was to Sarah's knowledge a very one-sided affection and they never really acted on that romantic attraction so it's yeah it's a second chance of what was never a first chance and I find that dynamic to be really beautiful and quite unique and the producer of some excellent sexual tension. It's so short I do wish it was a bit longer I definitely feel like there is enough material and emotion here for Lily Maxton to have expanded it into a whole novel and not just a novella but it's a lovely book to read in an evening if you're looking for a really cute short you know, romantically satisfying FF romance. The next book I have to recommend is Roller Girl by Vanessa North. Roller Girl follows Tina, who has been having a bit of a tough time prior to the narrative. She's finally living life as a trans woman and she's loving that, um, but she's also still reeling from her divorce and her career as a personal trainer has taken a bit of a hit because of some close-minded former clients. To top it all off, one day her kitchen floods and a very lovely, charming, direct young woman named Jo comes along to fix it and leaves having fixed her washing machine and also inviting Tina to join Joe's roller derby team. Through roller derby, Tina grows in confidence, she makes new friends, and she starts to develop feelings for Joe. But this is complicated by the fact that the roller derby group have quite a strict rule about no um, fraternising within that team. So it's a little bit forbidden love, it's a little bit kind of like boss employee, but not really, more like teammates. It's also a bit of a sports romance. I had never read anything where roller derby had such a prominent role before, and I really, really enjoyed it and the way it's portrayed is just this hugely confidence building sport. I would say if any of you are kind of sensitive to transphobia there are a few moments in the narrative where Tina is maybe misgendered or she's not treated perfectly um, but the narrative handles that really really sensitively and ultimately she comes out triumphant. So yes this is just a lovely heartwarming book that offers an insight into a sport that I'd never really seen represented in fiction before. And the final book that I have to recommend is very possibly my favourite on the list. It's also a very very popular FF romance so you guys might have heard of this one before but because I love it so much I could not put it in and that is Proper English by KJ Charles. Proper English is the prequel to Think of England which is KJ Charles's early 19th century murder mystery bonanza book and I loved that book too but proper English honestly just kind of tops it for me. It follows Pat who is an excellent marked woman as she travels to the country um, to celebrate the engagement of the eldest son of the Earl of Witten and the young society darling Fenella Carruth. However, when Pat arrives, secrets and betrayal and death starts to simmer under the facade of this seemingly perfect country house and she and Fenella, or Fen, have to solve the mystery before one of their loved ones ends up in a whole lot of trouble. There is so much to love about this book, guys. I could honestly make an entire video on it. It is as tightly woven, both in terms of plot and character, as every other KJ Charles book that I've read, which is to say very much so. Pat and Fen are two very, very different heroines, but they're so wonderfully developed and thought through in their own right, and I really loved how she explores the different experiences of womanhood. I feel like quite often people talk about womanhood as though it's this one unified experience, but both Pat and Fen are coming at it from very different perspectives. You have Pat, who has been raised in a house of brothers, who is a Marxwoman, who's always been respected, even if regarded as a little bit 
quirky for her skill. And then you have Fenella, who is very beautiful, who is very bubbly, who is very social, and she's always kind of been dismissed as a bit of a busybody for it. I believe the word that KJ Charles uses is flippity gibbet, which is just very fun to say. But yeah, they're two very different women, and when they come together and kind of channel that fear and rage at the interpretations of them into solving this mystery they are an unstoppable pair and i absolutely adored reading this book so yes if you haven't picked up proper english do yourself a favor and go ahead and do it and pick up think of england while you're pick up every kj charles book whilst you're at it because you will thank me for it she is an incredible historical romance author okay so there you guys have it those are my favorite ff books this is honestly just a fraction of the list that I had in mind, so if you guys would like a part two at any point, do let me know. I just tried to condense it to my absolute, absolute favourites for this one, so I wouldn't be rambling for like seven hours. I could happily ramble about FF romance for seven hours. If you guys have any recommendations that you would like for me to read or any requests for future videos, please do let me know below. Also, please let me know if um, you'd like for me to do any sort of Q&A thing to mark 500 subscribers. I really don't want to assume <laughs> that you guys want me to answer your questions um, but it seems like the sort of thing I wanted to celebrate somehow so yeah just send me a message or a comment if that is something you'd be interested in but until next time thank you so much for watching and goodbye